The ancient Hebrew scriptures foretold of the Anointed One, Yeshua HaMashiach. The Messiah Yeshua came to call the people back to the truth of His Word and to follow that righteous path. Yeshua then called Jewish men to be His disciples. Now, after 2,000 years, Beth Goyim Messianic Congregation has that same calling of those Jewish men, teaching the Route 66 Kings Highway from Genesis through to Revelation. Three brief overview sections in relation to this particular parash reading. Section 1, the Torah. Section 2, how this parash fits in the New Testament. Shalom once again. Shalom once again. It's such a joy to be coming to you via your television. Woo, coming right into your living rooms. Well, once again, my name is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman from Beth Goyim Messianic Congregation, where Jew and Gentile worship Yeshua, the Messiah, as one people. Yes, Messiah has come. 400 prophecies can't be wrong. Or, if you read the book of Daniel, that the Messiah, the Mashiach, had to come before the destruction of the Second Temple. So if it's not Yeshua, who is it? Tell me. I'm telling you, it's Messiah Yeshua. His name means salvation. Well, today, we're going to be looking at Parash 19, Teruma. It comes from the book of Shemot, Exodus chapter 25, verse 1 through chapter 27, verse 19. Now, a lot of people, once you start reading this section of the scriptures, they're like, oh, goodness, why am I reading this? Why am I reading this? It's so boring. To me, this part is really not boring. I mean, it can get tedious because it has a lot of directions. Because this section that we're going to be looking at today, Jehovah gives Moshe the law regarding offerings. He then gets instructions how to make the menorah, the lampstand, the Ark of the Covenant, how to build the tabernacle, how big it is, how many panels it is, how each part goes together. And when you look at this section, it's a beautiful puzzle how everything fits together just like your hands going together. We're just like you know, holding a baby's hand in your hand. And how beautiful that is. This is what we're reading here about this, the Mishkan, the tabernacle in the desert. We see in the book of Hebrews that what was then was just a copy, a miniature copy of what is going to come down from heaven. Why, we, why do we study it? We study it because when we get to heaven, we'll know where everything is. It'll be just like being home. Now let's take a look at it. Shemot 25, verse 1 and 2. Adonai said to Moshe, Tell the people of Israel to, make, to take up a collection for me, accept a contribution from anyone who wholeheartedly wants to give. It's one of the things that we should all be doing is giving our part to your churches, your congregation, to the Road to Emmaus, to the Prayer Tower. You can go to our website and donate if these teachings are blessing you, but only if you're wholehearted. Don't do it because you have to. Do it because you want to. You want to bless God and the work that is being done. Giving wholeheartedly means that it is a joy. It is an understanding that you want the work of God, that you were blessed about these teachings that are coming to you from this television show or on the internet where you go to our website, bethcoin.org, where you're getting more and you want to give because you were blessed because you grew closer with your king. You grew closer to his understanding. You grew closer so that you have more shalom. You have more peace. So the Lord is saying here, when they were building the Mishkan for the first time, you know what? Only those who want to really give, that have seen that I bless them. If you've got life today, you had food today, you had sunshine today, 
You can think of many blessings compared to some of the other people in the world in war-torn areas, in places that have no food at all, drought, famine, earthquakes, tornadoes, snowstorms. If you are blessed today, then you should give to the Lord wholeheartedly. Now we go to verse 8 and 9. 25, 8 and 9. They are to make me a sanctuary so that I may live among them. You are to make it according to everything I show you. The design of the tabernacle and the design of its furnishing. This is how you are to make it. And then Jehovah goes into certain things that we might get into today. But here, why is the Mishkan being made? Because from the time of the garden to this point in history, that we're reading in the book of Shemot, Exodus. Jehovah wants to live amongst His people. He wants to. He loves us. He cares for us. He desires that we come and worship Him. We come and give to Him. So, because He wants to pour out more than you can possibly, possibly even think about. So He says, build me this. Now turn to Matthew 1. Verse 21 to 23. Matthew 1, verse 21 to 23. She will give birth to a son, and you are to name him Yeshua. Not Jesus, Yeshua. Because he will save his people from their sins. All this happened in order to fulfill what Adonai had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and bear a son, and they will call him Im Anuel, or in English, God with us. Im Anuel, God with us. So from Exodus, when he says, build me a Mishkan, build me a place that will house my spirit when I want to come down, a little part of him, and he says, so that I can live among you. Then when he brought Yeshua in Matthew one twenty one, doesn't say Jesus there, there are no little Jewish boys named Jesus. Okay, it's Yeshua. It's not too hard to say Yeshua. In the Hebrew, that means salvation. And it says it right there in the passage in 121, because he will save his people. Salvation, Yeshua. But then the virgin will conceive and give birth to Im Anuel, God with us. Because he always wants to dwell with us. Jehovah wants to dwell with us. Yeshua wants to dwell with us. He wants to be part of us as one people. Now we go to chapter 25, verse 40. See that you make them according to the design being shown you on the mountain. Now, turn over to Hebrews 5, then we'll put the two together. Hebrews 8, verse 5. Hebrews 8, verse 5. But what they are serving is only a copy of a shadow of the heavenly original. For when Moshe was about to erect a tent, God warned him, See to it that you make everything according to the pattern you were shown on the mountain. So this Mishkan, this tabernacle, is a copy of what we're going to see in heaven. Or when the new Yerushalayim comes down, it's a copy. This is why we study the details found in the Torah and why there are so many details. And God said, make it according to the plan so that when we get back up there, we'll know where to go. Oh, our time is gone. Shalom. Ancient Hebrew scripture foretold of the Anointed One, the Melech Yisrael, King of Israel, the Sar Shalom, Prince of Peace. Now, 2,000 years after the destruction of the Holy Temple in Yisrael, Jewish believers are once again telling Jew and Gentile about the Jewish Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus. Come out to Beth Goyim, House of the Nations, where Jew and Gentile worship Yeshua as one people. So it was in the beginning, so too shall it be in the end of days. Come out every Shabbat, Saturday, the Lord's Day, at 11 a.m. for Messianic worship and the word from a truly biblical perspective. Once again, thanks again for tuning in to the Remnant's Call. In the name above any and all other names, Yeshua HaMashiach. Shalom.